before I bring season two Snakes of Louisiana to a close, I thought I'd finish it with the most rewarding species I found while I was down here. And it was by far my most dangerous encounter. Oh, wow, what a snake. My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. Knowing how many snakes are native to the forests of Louisiana, you're bound to see a venomous snake at some point. Usually it'll turn out to be a copperhead or a cottonmouth, both of which are significantly venomous. A bite from either could cause some serious harm and even death if you aren't lucky. However, neither of them compare to this monster of a snake in terms of size and venom. This is the canebrake rattlesnake. Look at that! Look at you! I thought it was like a big cottonmouth at first, and then I realized what I... Very dark. We got one! Freaking right, dude. This right here is the cane break rattlesnake. These snakes not only get bigger than cottonmouths on average, they also have a more toxic venom. So this by far is a more dangerous snake that I'm working with right here than any cottonmouth that we've worked with so far. Because they're bigger, they have a bigger venom yield, which just means they have more venom. This is a venomous enough snake that if I were to get bitten and that bite were to be left untreated, I would potentially die. These guys are some of the prettiest rattlesnakes, in my opinion, in the world. This is probably the ugliest uh, a canebrake rattlesnake can get. You can easily recognize it as a canebrake rattlesnake from other rattlesnakes that you get in the area, like diamondback rattlesnakes um, because of the chevrons on its back as opposed to the diamonds. Unfortunately, not only is this one really dark compared to most, it's also in shed, so that means it's even uglier. But nevertheless, a canebrake rattlesnake is a canebrake rattlesnake and we are more than happy to see it. Thankfully, it's calmed down since we first saw it. It was rattling a ton, but now it has calmed down quite a bit. However, this is a whoop. <laughs> You gotta, get, gotta keep your boundaries. These guys, because they're big, bigger snakes, they can have a bigger range and they can strike very, very far. And so we wanna never, ever underestimate the powers of this snake. This is easily probably a four foot rattlesnake in my hand right now. But these guys actually can get upwards of about six feet. It has and does happen pretty frequently too. Down here in Louisiana, because it is warm almost the entire year, these guys have a lot more opportunities to speed up their metabolism and go out and eat and so they get much bigger here. The canebrake rattlesnake is a variant of the timber rattlesnake, which actually occurs throughout almost the entire eastern United States. They go pretty damn far north. So right now you can see I'm not in the middle of the wild, I'm on the road, and there's a lot of trash out here, and that gives us an an excellent opportunity to flip them over and see what these snakes are up to. All the snakes we've seen today so far have actually been basking in these piles of branches where they blend in really well. So these guys are indeed a type of viper. This is very unlike a lot of the other snakes. These guys are much more closely related to the cottonmouths and copperheads than the other snakes that you get here because they are a type of viper. Specifically a pit viper, meaning that they are a viper with heat seeking pits on the front of their face. They have two of them. Each one is in front of the eye and behind the nostril and they are specifically designed to be able to see heat almost and that allows them to hunt for their prey even at night. So as we know, these guys have vertical pupils. Usually a vertical pupil snake means it's out at night, whereas these guys can be found, can be seen out during the day and at night, just like the cottonmouths and copperheads actually. Now these guys are going after uh, rodents. So this guy, what he was doing is he was sitting all stretched out, warming up in the sun before going somewhere partially shaded to pretty much just sit there and ambush. These guys are ambush predators. They have excellent camouflage. And so what they'll do is they'll sit there curled up, waiting for something to come to them or pass by and they immediately strike out, inject venom, let go, and then the animal dies very quickly from the venom, and these guys are left to eat in peace, and basically the rodent they're eating doesn't even have to squirm away because it's already dead. Because they get so big, they can eat rabbits. They literally can eat small rabbits. You can find these pretty much anywhere here in Louisiana. South Louisiana is obviously a great place to look for them, but they range pretty much throughout the entire state. But does a canebrake rattlesnake make a good pet? And the answer is absolutely not. This is a highly venomous snake. Never should be kept as a pet um, unless you are using it for educational purposes in which it can possibly. These guys, because they are fairly docile, um, I assume can be tamed. However, if you want a snake as a pet, obviously you don't want one of these. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the cane break rattlesnake. I'll see you guys next time a possibly even cooler snake. Hopefully one not as venomous. Compared to the rattlesnakes I find back home, 
The canebrake rattlesnake on average grows about twice the size of a typical Great Basin rattlesnake, and therefore can be much more dangerous because they possess more venom, which also happens to be more potent. But whether a snake is venomous or not, always treat it with nothing but respect. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like, and if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe.